the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. My dear friends, we are gathered here to offer this Mass on the memorial of St. Dominic. In this Mass, we pray for your intentions and pray for all the concerns you carry every day in your heart. But above all, we pray for an increase of faith, especially at very trying moments. Today, we also pray for those who have birthdays or anniversaries. Pray and ask that God may grant them the blessings of their of their days of celebration pray for those who are sick continue to pray for the people who are been displaced around the world especially those displaced in beirut we pray for those who are in danger of losing their unemployment benefits here in our own country and those who are homeless because of this virus pray for those who have died pray for those who care for our sick and those who are in critical care we ask God's stretch of his blessings over everyone. To prepare ourselves, dear friends, to offer this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the prophet Habakkuk. Are you not from eternity, O Lord, my holy God, immortal? O Lord, you have marked him for judgment. O Rob, you have remedied him, you have readied him punishment. Too pure are your eyes to look upon evil, and the sight of misery you cannot endure. When then do you gaze on the faithless in silence, while the wicked man devours one more just than himself? You have made man like the fish of the sea, like creeping things without a ruler. He brings them all up with his hook. He hauls them away with his net. He gathers them in his sign. And so he rejoices and exalts. Therefore he sacrifices to his net and burns incense to his sign. For thanks to them his portion is generous and his repast sumptuous. Shall he then keep on brandishing his sword to slay people without mercy? I stand at my guard post and station myself upon the rampant and keep watch to see what he will say to me and what answer he will give to my complaint. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write down the vision clearly upon the tablets so that the one can read it readily. For the vision still has its time, presses on to fulfillment, and will not disappoint. If it delays, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not be late. The rash man has no integrity, but the just man, because of his faith, shall live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalm is, 
You forsake not those who seek you, O Lord. You forsake not those who seek you, O Lord. The Lord sits enthroned forever. He has set up his throne on for judgment. He judges the world with justice. He governs the people with equity. You forsake not those who seek you, O Lord. The Lord is a stronghold for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of distress. They trust in you who cherish your name. For your sake, for you forsake not those who seek you, O Lord. You forsake not those who seek you, O Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Our Savior Jesus Christ has destroyed death and brought life to light through the gospel. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. A man came up to Jesus, knelt down before him and said, Lord, have pity on my son, who is a lunatic and suffers severely. Often he falls into fire and often into water. I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. Jesus said in reply, O faithless and perverse generation, how long will I be with you? How long will I endure you? Bring the boy here to me. Jesus rebuked him, and the demon came out of him. And from that hour the boy was cured. Then the disciples approached Jesus in private and said, Why could we not drive it out? He said to them, Because of your little faith. Men, I say to you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, Today, I hope that this weekend um, is a better week for you. I also hope that you are slowly recovering your sense of self, your faith, your confidence, and that slowly you are beginning to see that in spite of the apparent chaos, that God still has a plan and that plan is for you too and that brings me to what is happening here in this gospel reading a man whose child is really really sick he may have been born with this condition as many children sadly only God knows why that happens Maybe you have a case like this with a child who was born with a medical condition. And you may have been struggling with this condition for a long time. You could tell from this dad that he was desperate to save his child. And it was heartbreaking for him as a dad to watch his son go through everything that he was dealing with. He said to Jesus that this son of mine suffers severely. I'm sure this dad would wish if he could take over the part of this suffering from his son, but he couldn't. He says he suffers severely. From times he falls into the fire. And at other times he falls into the water. I think of a distant cousin of mine who had epilepsy. 
And yeah, she went through things like this. She, there were times where she would fall into the fire and there were town, times where she would just drop. Yeah, she struggled a lot. So that was what came to my mind when I was thinking of this, this boy. That is always very sad. Um, it's a very sad thing to, to behold where suddenly you just lost control and whatever is in front of you on the road, anywhere you could, it, it is a very scary thing. So I can only imagine what this dad was dealing with and what this family may have been going through. So he comes to Jesus. He has a problem. The problem is real. The problem is outside his control. He cannot do anything about it. So I, I don't know if you, maybe you may find yourself, you find yourself in that place, right? In a place like that where you are looking for help. Then you hear something that sounds like a place of hope. Maybe they said, they told you, well, this guy, I, I went, this guy that I know from here or from there is so good. He can do this for you. He can do that for you. And you go there and realize, um, that was just one more place to be disappointed. That's what happened to this guy. I'm sure he heard about Jesus and his team. So he couldn't just wait. He just picked, rushes straight, and then met, met the team. Because at this time, Jesus was up on the mountain, coming down from the mountain after the transfiguration. This happened immediately after the transfiguration. So he is not present. And this guy meets the disciples. The disciples, the other nine, were doing everything, trying to help this guy because they could tell he was in trouble. And they were unable to do it. I can only imagine this man's disappointment because I'm sure when he brought his son, he was hoping, thank God, this guy or this team that I hear can do all things. Hopefully, if I get there, this is going to be the end of my cry, the end of my son's suffering. And he goes there. And there was no way, there was no answer. These guys were doing everything. They were trying, they were praying and calling everything and nothing was happening. And so you could tell how he is reporting this to Jesus. He said, I brought, I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. I brought him to your disciples. I was hoping if I, if I meet anyone in your team, I will get this whole thing resolved. I brought him to your disciples and they could not cure him. Now, like I said, you may be in the place of this man or you may be the one suffering. It's possible. Or it's your family that has a situation that looks like that where some member of your family is suffering dreadfully. It could be from anything, alcoholism, or even from this virus and hope seems to be receding you seem to be losing hope that things are never going to get better that's what was happening to this man until Jesus showed up then came Jesus he shows up now it's also possible that you may be the apostles the apostles who thought you had what it took to do something and suddenly realized you were unable to do it. You may be feeling a sense of shame, sense of disappointment in yourself that you could not do something or just, you know, handle this problem. Because I was then thinking about those guys, you know, when they, this man brought their child. These apostles, don't forget, they had done some miracles before. You remember when they went for their mission, they came back and told Jesus that they could call down, that they, um, they were able to cast out demons and the devil. They drove out demons and did all kinds of things. They healed the sick. And they could even see the devil fall down from heaven. So, so they have had opportunity of real success before. Where they, they did a lot of miracles. So they trusted in their ability to do a lot. So maybe that's you. Now there's one thing I want you to recognize in these apostles. It's not that they didn't have the power in them. All right, or the, there was God was, didn't have the power to do what needed to be done for this kid. But there's one thing God does not want us to forget. The power is God's. We are his agents. The power is not ours. 
that means it does not reside in me it's not in me now it can come through me to get something done it does not reside in me that power resides only in God I'm sure that's what the apostles forgot and because they forgot that they forgot to make an ascent in faith to tap that source that source can be tapped only by faith it's not in you you are its agent I am its agent it can come through me and get some stuff done but I have to reach out in faith to that source it's only with faith that I turn on like the faucet I turn on that faucet and the blessings come through to get the job done the apostles seem to have forgotten that they thought that just because they were able to do the other time heal the sick raise the dead or maybe call down the I'm uh, sorry have the devil fall down before them like thunder and lightning they thought it was all about them they forgot that it wasn't all about them they were just mere instruments of the Almighty God and when you recognize your own place as an instrument not not the reservoir or not the source it's very important and so they forgot that and so for God to use their faith instead they were trusting in themselves and believing that they could do it all by themselves and that didn't work so you realize when they were asking Jesus why were you unable to do that we taught you how we had the same power like you and Jesus said no this one you need faith if your faith were the size of a mustard seed now faith here wasn't faith in themselves was because faith in themselves was it was the result of this that was arrogance faith in God is humility it's recognizing the power above you faith in oneself is good but it can lead to arrogance faith in God leads you to be humble before God now they were missing what the ingredient they were missing was faith in God they had faith in themselves but faith in God and so Jesus brings them over and says if your faith is the size of a mustard seed this would have been an easy thing to do because just like just watch the last sentence there it says if your faith were the size of a mustard seed you will say to this mountain move from here to that place and it will move for nothing will be impossible he says nothing will be that means if you have faith if you have that one resource if you have that one asset that is needed to tap from the source which is faith nothing will be impossible to you nothing will be impossible to you and so my dear friends as we we worship today I don't know which of these personalities that you identify with maybe you are the man with a sick child or the sick person or maybe you are the person who is just desperate or maybe the apostles who are feeling disappointed and a sense of shame that you were unable to get some stuff done only because you forgot like your staff that God gave to you which is your faith you, you are reminded by this text that when you are dealing with God nothing is more essential than your faith not your race not your gender not your age not your political standing or religious standing not your social class or your political class not how many people you know that doesn't matter here when you are dealing with God the one thing that matters over and above all things is your faith it can open all doors even the ancient of doors we pray dear friends that God may help us to remember this one resource that we or this one source that we or one resource that we have this one asset that we have and never more to forget it especially when we are dealing with God as always I like to end my reflections by reminding you that you are the delight of the mighty God and that God loves you very much let us pray most gracious God, just hear the concerns we are bringing to you today. Pray especially for an increase of faith when we are tempted to doubt, when we lose our faith because of the enormous 
the enormous nature of our problems. Help us to recognize that those problems are as insignificant before you as anything else. And help us to look to you, the source of every good favor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for parents. Pray especially for parents who are struggling with children with mental or physical disabilities. That God may help them recognize the value he places on their role and the vote of confidence he has in them. That they may find grace and strength to continue to love and care for their children. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who suffer, especially those who suffer from natural or medic, natural birth ailments, whether those be physical or mental. Some are completely overwhelmed by their suffering. That God may give them grace and strength to recognize his activity in their lives every day. And if God wills, that God may grant them healing and restoration. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick with this virus. Pray for victims of natural disasters and man-made disasters around the world, especially those who have been impoverished around the world, those who have been abused sexually, financially, or abused in other ways. Pray and ask that God may touch the minds and hearts of leaders around and people of goodwill to come to their help. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our medical staff around the world. Pray especially for those here in our country who continue to risk every day as they provide care and solace to our sick, that God may protect them and do the same to their families. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have birthdays or anniversaries today. Pray especially for my young brother whose feast day is today, St. Dominic, that God may bless him and grant him every good favor to meet his every need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I pray for those who have sent intentions for this Mass and those who have intentions that you carry in your hearts that from this altar to God's altar in heaven your intentions may rise like incense. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask our Blessed Mother to intercede for us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. Gracious God, hear these concerns we have brought before you. Accept and grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed I Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed I Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Let us pray. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is really right and just. Our duty and our, our, duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, 
incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of a virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we are claiming. Holy, holy, holy God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, giving thanks he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring all to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, who have placed you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray using the water our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always and with your spirit. Dear friends, let us all fight over the sign of our peace. And for me to all of you, May God's peace rest and abide now and forever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers, and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. Now, let us pray for the grace of spiritual communion. Most gracious God, today you remind us of the value and importance of our faith. We ask, O oh God, as your children around the world are sent to you with their faith and ask the blessings and favors of their lives, that their faith may draw for them the grace and the blessings of spiritual communion, that they may receive the full effect of this sacrament right now and right there. For we ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection of all those you renew with these heavenly gifts. And in your near, your never failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and sin of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the winds of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to you for joining us at this Mass. I pray that God may bless you and that God may increase your faith and that God may remind you of your place in that relationship. As always, I'd like to remind you, you remain, now and always, the delight of God Almighty. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will sing a song to our Blessed Mother. You know, um, St. Dominic was someone who is reputed to have said, prepared the other part of the rosary so I will I know he and the Blessed Mother are always together so we'll sing Hail Mary full of grace that's gentlewoman Hail Mary full of grace the Lord is with you blessed are you among women Blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and of the hour of our death. Amen. Gentle woman. With light, morning star, so strong and bright, gentle mother, peaceful dove, teach us wisdom, teach us love.